Welcome to Market Makers, everybody. Your home for tomorrow's TA today. Often imitate it, never replicate it. A special Wednesday transmission for you because we had a hotter than hot CPI. In other words, the CPI was supposed to come in hot. It came in hotter than expected. Three spot five versus three spot four. Core, which was supposed to show cooling from last month, came in hot. The markets are red. If you've been watching this channel the last two to three weeks, you know that our timing cycles, our Fibonacci, the eclipse crash cycle, everything was providing confluence for this upcoming market turn. But our key support structures have not been broken yet. We're going to go over that on the equities, go over that on the cryptos. Important video for you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe because you only get this type of information on YouTube and on X on this channel. Guys, without further ado, Lee, let's start the show. All right, guys, as always, this broadcast. This podcast is brought to you by our two fantastic sponsors, Simple FX and Bing X. If you want to trade these Ponzi markets, check those sponsors out. The links are in the video description. I'll pin them in the comments. And guys, if you want to be with a group of freedom seeking individuals, check out our discord. I am there six days, if not seven days a week. So check out that discord because Bing X and Simple FX will pay for your first month. All that information is in the video description. Message Lee in the Telegram with any questions. Let's kick it off with the 10-year yield. Now, as I'm recording this video, it's 1247. In about 13 minutes, we're going to have a 10-year auction, okay? So this could shoot up even higher. It could come back down. A 10-year auction on a day where the 10-year is now 4 spot, 5-2%. A 15, nearly 16 basis point move. We talked about this in the last video. Hot CPI will put pressure on the yields to go up, which will put pressure on the markets to go down. Trending towards our four spot five, four, eight, which is four spot five, five. That could provide some resistance. So let's see what happens. Higher 10 year, 10 year guys, weaker markets. You got to remember that. Where did we get to? Up at 5%. We got to 5%. And what did the markets do last time? That was the correction, right? That correction from the July high to the October low. This was your correction. And then yields fell off. Markets moved back up. So we could see the exact same thing play out again. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine markets moving in cycles and patterns. So interesting right? What about the DXY? We're breaking out. Here's our harmonic target, the one fib of 106.704 off our trend-based fib. Looking at this for confluence, get our targets off our W pattern, the 1618 at 106.59. Again, this is nothing more than a W pattern. Hot CPI provided the catalyst for the dollar to break out as we've been talking about. And this is your target up here for the dollar to get to. Now let's go ahead and move forward. Let's look at the E-mini. Here's my macro cycle. Covered this extensively. Go back two videos and watch this. I built this chart out for you to simplify it. This is what we're looking at. We have our wave three up here. And no, this is not Elliott wave theory. I don't trade with Elliott wave theory. So you can stop asking me that or pointing that out in the comments. This is my own wave theory based on the wave theory of WD GAN, Charles Dow, and Richard Wyckoff. Okay. So this is what I'm looking at here in the market. The wave three coming down to four for this retracement. And the key points to remember about this retracement, market geometry, market symmetry. We did this harmonic cycle in the last retracement, 22 bars, 93 days. I think we're getting the exact same retracement once again, and this will come down 20 bars, 89 days. 
89 being the Fibonacci sequence, 21 bars being the Fibonacci sequence as well. And of course, with confluence of our timing cycles, we had the total solar eclipse, the eclipse crash cycle, which takes how long to play out on average? Statistically, going back to the 1600s, it takes 89 days. Convenient. What a coincidence that that's the exact same timing cycle of these two retracements potentially. Okay. So we're going to be watching that. It's going to move forward. E mini on the daily time frame, but we haven't broke our key market structure yet. Here's your 20 for those of you that trade with moving averages. Here's your 50, right? Let me make sure that I have those. Yep. 20 and 50. So here's your 50. So you came down below the 20, you found your fractal, you bounced back up, BTFD boys still in the marketplace. Retail has no idea they're being sold into. This is normal at market tops. I would not be surprised, guys, to see this rally back up. And as a matter of fact, I hope it does because it gives a clear entry for another good trade on the S&P. I had told you guys on the channel, as well as posted a short in our room, would be short the S&P above. 5300 here we are at 5200 5199 and if this comes back up this will give you a nice pattern especially if you look zoom out and look on a larger time frame talked about this last video as well your three wave pattern this is all this is is your three wave pattern and it would be great to see i don't want to see it just break down and sell even though i'm still in my short on the nasdaq as i told you guys at 186 but this is what i want to see i want to see this three wave pattern play out which is nothing more than an abc okay the whole market is three and five wave patterns. The two upside targets to watch, 618-5273, if we can get any type of reversal, may take some days to play out, and the 786 at 5300. That would complete a three-wave pattern and give us a clean entry into trading the S&P once again if you did not happen to short this up at the top. Where would you want to see this break down to before I was aggressively pyramiding into a short? I want to see it get below the 50. Be great for a retest too. That is at currently at 51.35, this level right here. So in other words, I would want to see price come down. If it doesn't bounce back up, I want to see it break down, get below the 50, be great for a retest. You take out this fractal, you take out this fractal, form your Livermore pivot right there and trade this thing to the downside as it descends. That's what I would want to do, but much easier to me on a three-day chart, let this sucker wave back up. I hope people buy the market, let it wave back up, give a cleaner entry. I can base my stop loss off market structure or ATR, different options available there. You guys want to learn about some of these techniques, check out our Discord. Let's go ahead and look at the NQ. NQ, we talked about this chart as well. We built it out last video. Same wave pattern, guys. I'm looking for the retracement to come down to that June 20th, June 25th range, uh, right by the uh, summer solstice on June 20th. And of course, with total solar eclipse, market starting to roll over. Just watch. Let's watch this thing trend down here. It'll be ups and downs. Watch this thing trend down here just like it did here. And this is where I will be buying if we make a bottom and hold a bottom, build a bullish pattern, break out to the upside, I'll be buying for that blow off top move to 21K, giving us the natural doubling in the market, a 100% doubling. That is the blow off top for the wave five and esoteric wave theory. Okay, that's what I will be looking at on the NQ. An alternative view, because so many of you are adamant that this is the blow off top and we won't come back up for a blow off top. Again, possible. I don't care because I'm already short the NASDAQ. If it keeps cratering, fantastic. It needs to break key support. We'll look at that in a second. But if we do come back down, hit our retracement level and then bounce back up, this would be your lower high alternative, 17.6, 18.104, and then you would complete your ABC move down as well, okay? If this if this was your blow off top, I personally don't think it is. I think it's really difficult with a trillion dollars being printed and spent every three months by the Biden administration, but that caveat is inflation. We've got that hotter print. What if next month is yet again another hotter print? What if PPI comes in again tomorrow hot? Again, this is all going to be confluence for the retracement. Once I have candles, guys, once I have candles, we will know what to look for 
down here in our projected range for the retracement. 17K brings you back to the December top. And of course, the 16K marker brings you back to the July high. This is what these patterns are based off of. And of course, 4,800 on the S&P or 4,600. But just watch it happen. But we have to lose key support. What's key support here on the NASDAQ on the daily time frame? There's your 50, guys. You're below the 20. Once again, bouncing off the 50. And if you zoom out to the three-day chart, GAN's primary trend chart, you can see this move. Look at that. You have, what, four red candles in a row. So you have your four red candles in a row. I want to see this hold. I want to see this bounce back up. And if this bounces back up, guys, what I'm looking for is that retracement up to 18,568 at the 786 or the one to, or the uh, 618 here at 18,457. These are my two targets for this three wave move. So once again, this is quite simply nothing more than a three wave move on a large time frame. Remember, the larger the time frame, the more powerful the patterns are. So I want to see this come back up to the 618 at 18,457 or come up to the 786 at 18,568, complete the three-wave move and then break down and then break down. And once again, if you understand these confluences in the marketplace, you can always take a chance on trading like I did at 18,6, posted that on our Discord as well, okay? able to capture this entire move based on confluences of factors. So that's something to always understand is you're looking for an amalgam of confluences when you're trading, whether you're bullish or bearish, it has to marry to your market narrative of what you think's happening. But this is not breaking down yet until we get below the 50. Could that happen? I mean, it could easily happen. That's only the 50 right now is at 18,089. Price is 18,190. Getting this bounce back up, I hope it comes back up and tests these higher levels. Give other people more opportunities to potentially trade. All of the indices are divergent, so I'm not going to show you this on every single one. We go over this every single video. You guys know I hate repeating myself. The max FOMO, max money flow, max momentum was all during your winter solstice rally, your December peak, and the S&P, and the NASDAQ. All of this afterwards is divergent, which is why you're going to get a substantial retracement in the marketplaces. Let's go ahead and move forward. Looking at the NQ on a fractal layout here of the one hour time frame. Again, you broke down to your 18,051. You tested it. You bounced back up off of it. Okay. So, from a fractal perspective, the next level I want to see taken out is 18,408, gets you back above this range. As we move back up, our fractal 18,568 lines up beautifully beautifully with the 786. Okay. So this is my target for a rebound 18,568 or lower 18,457 at the 618. But I want to see this play out in the smaller time frames. See if we can hold our base. PPI comes in hot guys. The yields could keep moving up and this thing can start to break down from a fractal trading perspective. That would mean entering after you break and close below 18,051. But with the 50 right there, I want to see us get below the 50, close below the 50, and it would be great to get a retest of that 50. I'll keep you guys updated in future videos as well. Dow not playing out quite as nicely. You fell below the 50 substantially, okay? So your retest may be to the 50 or back in this range. 38,864 was your fractal low currently on a daily time frame, which isn't closed yet, but you are below it at 38,736. You want to watch your up fractal here at 39,657 to see if you do, if the markets do rebound, notice your uptrend is just starting to break, right? You're just starting to break that uptrend, which, you know, what is a uh, moving average anyways? It's nothing more than a uh, lagging trend line. That's all it is. It's a lagging trend line, but just taking a trend line from your base here after your little uh, correction move here from the winter solstice rally, you can see, depending how you want to draw that, you fell below your trend line, you could come back up and retest it, which lines up beautifully with your fractals, 39,653. Let's look at this at a three-day perspective. 
again, stark red. You don't often get stark red without some type of rebound. You can see this in the history of the charts, right? So, I mean, look at your charts. Here's your multiple three day candle sell off one, two, three, four, five candles, and then a rebound back up, and you actually made a high. So, that's what I'm looking at. Unless you crack the key support levels, which you have not done yet, you have on the Dow, but not on the NASDAQ, not on the SP, unless you start closing below the 50, look for rebounds back up. It'll give you, especially if it's a lower high to the 618 or to the 786, this is how you start forming higher probability trades. Every trade is a gamble, whether you're long or short. So you look for a confluence of indicators and look for higher probability trades. And that would be a fantastic trade if this comes back up for a lower high across the board in the indices. Let's go ahead and move forward. Russell shit the bed. I think it was down over 3% today. It's down two and a half over, just over two and a half as I make this. And where did it fall to, guys? It fell to the Wyckoff ceiling at 20.33 for support. Russell, just like everything else, if it can hold the support level, let's see if we get this pattern because you had a head and shoulders here in a daily time frame, or as you guys know it, a five wave pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder broke down, fell to support. Can we rebound back up? If we rebound back up, where could that go to? Your up fractal is 2167. Your 618, which is a key fib from your all-time high, is at 2146. Let's just pull a more narrow fib here. You could have the Russell come up to the 618 at 2113, which takes you right to this fractal high here. So that would look like this. Let me zoom in some so you guys can see this if you're watching this on your phones from 10 years ago. Let me go ahead and open this up. And we can do something like this, right? So we had the sell off. We could rebound up to the 618, come back down, or potentially to 786 at 2137. And of course, your 618 FIB is right here at 2146. That's assuming we can hold these key support levels. So look for that rebound. The uh, markets aren't ready to capitulate yet. You have to remember, guys, when is retail the most bullish? This is going back since the inception of the markets. This is how Charles Dow was able to write about this in the 1800s. Retail is most bullish at the tops when everything is pristine and everything looks rosy. And this is why you always have a battle for a topping action. And when are they the most scared? At the bottom, when nobody wants to buy. After everybody's negative in something, that's when they're the most scared. So this is a topping process that can wave back up. It doesn't change the directional view. My market view, your market view may be different. My market view is we're coming down for these retracements. This is all part of the topping process process along with volatility. And it would be great to get these rebounds back up to the upside. Let's go ahead and look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin, guys, uh, we already know about the diamond pattern. We have the breakout. We talked about how we got the target up here, right? We've been talking about this for weeks and weeks on this channel. Diamond pattern breakout hit the two fib beautifully. I want to show you what I think is going on with Bitcoin here. And I want to show you this by understanding once again, let's go over this because it's important, your wave movements, your proportional movements in the marketplace. From the market low to your diamond pattern high, you can see your wave up, your accumulation, your wave up, right? So let's look at this. Diamond pattern high, three-day chart, July 12th candle. There's your July high. Just like what? Just like the markets, Bitcoin tracks with the markets. So we pull that fib down for our projection. Where did we get to? The two fib. Just remember that. The two fib. 48,196 before we had this excellent retracement here. We got to 200% on the fib and then we fell 21%. Okay. So we got to the two fib. That was for this wave. Let's look at this wave. This wave here is 105% from your market low to your diamond pattern high. Now coming out from the low of your diamond pattern to that 200% retracement, 105, 102. Now let's take the next projection. If we look at our next projection, how we got that target up there for the two fib on this channel, we pull it from this accumulation high down to your diamond pattern low, Look at your two fib. You once again hit the two fib. This is part of the concepts in geometric trading, guys. Market geometry, as you guys know, heavily influenced by this. It's part of the fundamentals of my trading methodology. You're having symmetrical moves in the marketplace. 105% wave, 102% wave. Hit the two fib on a projection, hit the two fib on a projection. So could this be the top? Well, let's measure this from where we broke out from in this accumulation pattern up to the top. 
this could be the top as it has been the top since we hit it. And we had an excellent retracement from this move. Let's go ahead and take that retracement. You had an 18% retracement. You previously retraced 21%. 18%. So could Bitcoin be done here? It could be. But notice the wave symmetry is not even. Does it have to be even? No, it does not. But you start putting factors together, right? 105%, 102%, 91%. So we actually have another 10% or so that we could potentially move to get wave symmetry. We have Fibonacci symmetry. We don't have wave symmetry yet. So let's just play a thought experiment here. What if this wave actually does come up to the 102 to 105 percent to match the two prior waves here in the marketplace? Well, let's go ahead and look at this from a Fibonacci perspective. We take our up fractal down to our low here of the current range. As you guys know, this is a W. I'll show you on the smaller time frames. Let's just measure this out and see what this would do. So we're at 91 percent. Let's go ahead and bring this up. We want to come to 100% takes you to just over 102% takes you to 78.5. And the 1618 here takes you to 110%. That's your 1618. Okay. So I think if we take this projection here from this uh, portion of the W pattern, that was one way to measure. This is my second confluent way to measure. These are the targets I gave you before. Your 76.4 right here, 76.423. Let's check this. 76.423 is a 100% move. And if you come up a little bit above that, your 2FIB once again is 105%. So I like this projection on the W pattern from your midpoint high to your low, just like I showed you last video. This gives you a target of 76 to 79. This would be your false break target. What do I mean by false break? Let me show you on the daily time frame. Your false break target would just simply look like this, okay? Here's your W pattern. Been over this many times now, but this is your W pattern. If you break out, you take out that fractal, you take out that fractal. This gives you that 76.4. Damn it, I got to pull this fib down once again. Keep clicking the wrong candle there. 76,423 to your 79,250. Okay. That's your target range up here for wave symmetry on a larger pattern. False break meaning price would come up and it would be bullish. People would be really excited. This is the target I've been waiting for. We're going to 100K. If the markets wave back up, which they could, as I just showed you, if they wave back up to challenge their all-time highs, Bitcoin's going to break out, I believe, on this false break pattern and come out to 76.4 to 79.250 in this range. And if it does that and it ends up topping here, false breaks tend to lead to false sells, okay? Fast sells. So that's the pattern I'd be looking at if you come up there. Now, conversely, if the markets just start continue, continually fall, don't wave back up. At some point they will, but they don't wave back up. They lose key support. Then the fractal you need to watch on Bitcoin is 64,450. If you take out this low, your higher probability is you're coming down and you're coming down to take out 60,780. So if the markets hold their key support, Watch for Bitcoin with the market confluence. The markets wave back up. They hold their key support. Watch for the false break to the 1618 at 76,423, all the way up to that 79K level. That's the levels you need to watch here on Bitcoin. This FIB keeps moving. There we go. 76,423, 79,250. These are the two levels you need to watch for this to squirt out and give you that target, right? That harmonic symmetry on a larger time frame, 102% to 105% of a wave. This is where you want to be, right in this range when you zoom out lining up your wave patterns, giving you market symmetry. Again, just another indicator of harmonic confluence to take a trade at. Could you try to long this? Of course you could. You could try to long it. I personally am not interested in trying to long this. With the hotter inflation, the markets need to hold their support and wave back up. Smaller time frame traders, lots of people on the Discord, I'm sure, will be trying to long this. I want to see if we do get our breakouts. My trade's going to be up here between 76.4, 79.250. If we get our false break to the upside with the markets waving back up. Let's go ahead and go to Solana. Solana tested that fractal, that 167.93, uh, came back up, trying to hold this range. Again, you're up fractals 204, 210. 
If Bitcoin does end up doing a false break, look for the altcoins to follow. Obviously, if you find your key resistance between 204 and 210, once again, we talked about this last video, this would give you a triple top formation if you end up failing here once again, okay, giving you a bearish pattern. If you break out to the upside, we'll have another video to cover that. But your key fib there is the 786 at 205, our rinse and repeat trades for 21% and 14% drop. Solana's down at its base. We need to give time for these markets to see if they can hold and wave back up. We look at Ethereum, same thing, guys, the 707 at 3,700. Here's your W pattern on Ethereum. You want to break that fractal, that midpoint fractal. You're still holding your higher low here. So if you can come back up and break to the upside, where could Ethereum potentially fail if Bitcoin breaks out to the upside in a false break? Watch 40, 13, 40, 95 is your fractal high. In other words, calling for Ethereum to wave back up to that 786 from your all time high. Let's zoom in on this because this is worth zooming in on so you guys can see this because I'm pretty sure we can get a harmonic target right at that 786 level. So I just showed you the W pattern. Let's take our fib retracement midpoint down to the higher low. There's your 1618, 39.75, your key fib at 40.13. Again, this would call for this move here in the marketplace. W pattern, higher low structure, take out your fractal, come up to this range, form our kill box, meaning some type of pattern within this range, such as a double top, triple top, whatever, head and shoulders pattern, and then you break down. So watch that 786.40.13, if everything holds support, and waves back up one last time. Because these retracements, in my opinion, in my market view, are coming in, and these are gonna be bangers. These are gonna be banger trades if it plays out that way. Let's look at ADA. ADA, again, holding that key fractal, we tested it now for the fourth time, 58 cents or 56, 56 cents, uh, let's just round it up to 57. 57 cents, you bounce back off of it, you got below the channel, came back up. Again, you need to come up to 68 cents, this fractal, to get any type of up move here. If you don't do that, this will be the first level to watch, to take out. I would look at ADA if you're trading it in confluence with what Ethereum and Bitcoin are doing, obviously, and watch these levels. If we look at this from a Fibonacci perspective, guys, we can pull down our Fib from your channel high, down to your low, which is, this is still your low here. Watch that 0.5 fib. That's your fractal literally on the, on the penny here, 68 and a half cents, 68 and a half cents, 71 cents. And then your 786 is at 75 cents. You'd be looking at ADA coming up, pulling back, maybe coming up to the 618 or 786, but it needs to do this in the market. It's waving up. Okay. Let's go international real quick. We had our, uh, a pattern we just talked about last. I told you you had wave one, one down. Will we get wave three? I said yes, three down. Again, we need to hold this key support structure. Your fractal low. This is three waves to a bottom. Another way to express this, an esoteric wave theory, is a five wave move. This is going to trigger all the Elliott wave people. Hey, you can't do that. That's not Elliott wave. But if you look at this, one, two, three, four, five. If you can hold the support, the whole market is three wave patterns and five wave patterns, guys. What you need to understand about the markets. If you can hold the support, you want to look for the rebound, the wave back up, because on a larger time frame, that's your eight hour. If you go out to your three day chart, again, look at the sell off you will find support. And typically what happens in action, reaction, key principle in Wyckoff trading, action, reaction, you find support at some level, the BTFD bros will come back into the marketplace. And when they come back into the marketplace, they will run it back up. And when they run it back up, Big dumb money will sell into small dumb money and this will roll back over. So it's always easier if it hits a key fib retracement to trade these moves. And the key fib retracement on the DAX is 18,598 and 18,703. So be waiting to see if this comes back up on a three-day perspective. Obviously, your low is very important at 18,213. And just like everything else, you're struggling, you're at 18,290. Okay. So you want to find the level that you hold and then look for the re rebound. And then that's your area. If it holds as resistance where you would be trading the market for that move up in your kill box, boom down. That's how you trade these markets. Let's look at the ASX, the Aussie index. Again, key level support, 78.30 at the 1618. You're still holding it. I'd want to see this move back up. Your key up fractal is 78.99 as it sits right now. Just taking a fib from the 
your high down to your low here, 618-7899. Where'd you find resistance? 618-618. So watch your 618-7899 if you get a wave back up and hold your key support levels. And then the 786 just above it at 7931. Guys, hope you enjoy the video. I answer your questions and comments as always. Definitely message on X. I like to reply on there as well. This video is posted there. And give us a follow while you are at it. Hope to see you guys in a Discord. And I'll see you Monday for the next transmission. And uh, guys, have a fantastic weekend. Talk to everybody soon.